Hi, my name is Mark McCarty. I am Science Director for NutriGuard Research, and I am publishing a commentary in an upcoming version of Mayo Clinic Proceedings entitled L-Carnitine Consumption, Its Metabolism by Intestinal Microbiota and Cardiovascular Health. Carnitine is a physiologically essential nutritional cofactor that's found primarily in flesh foods, especially red meats. However, fortunately for vegetarians, we make some in our own bodies, although we don't always make as much as would be uh, uh, physiologically optimal. Carnitine functions as a transporter and buffer for acetyl and fatty acyl groups in metabolism. For example, uh, it helps to transport fatty acids into mitochondria where they can be burned for energy. Conversely, it, transport, it transports acetyl groups out of mitochondria so they can be used biosynthetically, for example, acetylcholine synthesis or histone acetylation or other, other purposes. Its uh, buffering activity is also uh, quite important because under certain circumstances, the levels of acetyl-CoA uh, acetyl or acetyl or fatty acyl-CoA build up to too high a level in tissues and the carnitine can reduce those levels in a way that uh, can be beneficial. For example, if you have uh, an ischemic tissue, uh, a buildup of acetyl-CoA in mitochondria tends to inhibit your burning of glucose for fuel, which is very uh, inadvisable because uh, in ischemic circumstances, glucose is the ideal fuel. It requires fairly little oxygen to burn. So carnitine, by bringing down the acetyl-CoA level helps your ischemic tissue burn more glucose and that may be one reason why carnitine is useful in ischemic syndromes. But, uh, rather recently, a major meta-analysis by Dr. James D. Nicolantonio and colleagues uh, was published in the Mayo Clinic Proceedings, which surveyed 13 different placebo-controlled uh, clinical trials uh, addressing patients who previously had had a myocardial infarction in which uh, carnitine was uh, used therapeutically. And what this study showed is that uh, the carnitine supplementation reduced significantly uh, total mortality and also reduced risk for uh, angina and new arrhythmias. In addition to this impressive result, there are a number of other studies showing that uh, carnitine has some symptomatic benefit in intermittent claudication and in congestive heart failure. Uh, there are also indications that in the form of uh, acetyl carnitine, this nutrient is useful for uh, slowing cognitive decline in elderly people who have either minimal cognitive dysfunction or early Alzheimer's. Uh, there are some studies suggesting that it can modestly improve uh, glycemic control in diabetes. And one of the more interesting recent reports is that in people who are quite elderly and who are, com who are complaining of physical and mental fatigue, a carnitine not only alleviates that fatigue, but actually causes some significant loss of body fat, a corresponding increase in lean mass. So <clears throat> there's really quite a, a, a range of studies suggesting that this uh, nutrient may have versatile uh, protective potential. Now, I've been <coughs> following uh, clinical carnitine literature for several decades, and there are a number of positive studies. There are some that have shown uh, no apparent effect, but I never encountered a study which claimed the carnitine was dangerous. And so that's why I was uh, virtually stunned when not too long ago I received an email from a friend of a essay by Gina Colada in the New York Times, which uh, contended that there was now evidence <coughs> that the carnitine content of red meat was largely responsible for the adverse impact of, of uh, red meat on vascular health. But this article was based on several studies done by Dr. Stanley Hazen and his colleagues at the Cleveland Clinic. And let me explain briefly what these uh, studies showed. These indicate that if a, if a person or an animal ingests carnitine or a closely related uh, nutritional compound called choline, that it tends to encourage the growth of gut bacteria, which are capable of uh, breaking down these nutrients to release trimethylamine. And trim trimethylamine, in turn, can be absorbed. And in the liver, it's converted to a compound called trimethylamine in oxide, or TMAO for short. Now Hazen's group uh, has presented evidence that at least in some sufficiently high concentration, TMAO is pro-atherogenic. They have shown that in an atheroma strain, uh, prone strain of mouse, that feeding high levels of TMO encourages uh, atherosclerosis. Uh, more troubling than that, they've shown that a very high intake of carnitine in this mouse strain likewise has a pro-atherogenic effect. And most recently, in the New England Journal, they have presented evidence from an epidemiological study 
uh, in which they looked at baseline TMAO levels uh, in a number of individuals and followed them for three years. And what they found is in the, in the top quartile of uh, TMAO, as compared to the bottom quartile, risk for cardiovascular events was about two and a half times as high over the three-year follow-up period. So that, on its face, that seems like a pretty uh, difficult indictment of carnitine. The only thing I knew about trimethylamine is that that's what makes fish stink when fish rot. And so I went to PubMed and I typed in trimethylamine and I typed in fish. And uh, I was pretty surprised within several minutes I found evidence that fish are rich not in trimethylamine but in TMAO. As a matter of fact, the average uh, TMAO content of a pound of fish is about 1.7 grams. In comparison, red meat uh, has at most 350 milligrams of carnitine uh, per pound, some a modest proportion of which conceivably would be converted to TMAO in the body. So what this means is um, if you uh, ingest comparable amounts of fish and beef, you will get at least 10 times the TMAO exposure from fish. And yet fish is known as the heart-healthy food. The epidemiology suggests that it's, it, it's, it's uh, beneficial to health. So this, two things follow from this. One is that uh, it suggests that ambient levels of uh, uh, TMAO in humans are not likely to have a, have a profound uh, uh, impact, uh, negative impact in vascular health because heart-healthy fish provides the greatest exposure you can get, and yet it's still consistent with protection. The other implication of this is that the notion that TMAO is the reason why, carnitine and TMAO is the reason why red meat is so toxic to the vascular system is evidently ridiculous because heart-healthy fish gives you a much larger exposure. Well, what about some of the other evidence they presented? What about the studies, uh, the study they did with carnitine and atherogenesis? I searched the literature on that, and I was able to find two previous studies which had been conducted in uh, uh, rabbits, which had found that supplemental carnitine was highly protective. What might account for this? Well, when I looked at the protocol of uh, the Hazen Group study with carnitine, I found they were using 1.3% carnitine in water. And so that all, their, all, all the time the, ra the, the mice were drinking uh, water with this much carnitine in it. If a human were to drink carnitine at that concentration, two liters per day, that would correspond to 26 grams of carnitine a day. The clinical dose of carnitine is somewhere in the range of two to four grams per day, and the amount that one would get from ordinary diets is an order of magnitude lower than that. So, uh, whereas in comparison, the two rabbit studies that had shown positive effects of carnitine on the atherogenic process were using doses which were much closer to the clinical range when extrapolated uh, appropriately. So I think a, a reasonable uh, exp explanation of this paradox is that Optimal levels of carnitine per se in your body do in fact protect from atherosclerosis, but if you take totally humongous doses of uh, a carnitine such that you greatly overproduce TMAO, the production of TMAO may, may offset much of the benefit of the carnitine per se. So both, both, it's, not, it's possible that both, uh, all, all of those studies are correct. Now what about the epidemiological data? that they have presented on, on carnitine. Well, if you look at the uh, mice that they induced uh, atherosclerosis in with TMAO, their TMAO concentrations are in the range of about 150 micromolar, whereas the average level in humans is a little above three micromolar, and in the top quartile that experienced the increased risk, it was a little bit over six. In other words, the, the, the uh, levels that were clearly atherogenic in the mice were at least an order of magnitude higher than humans would experience uh, uh, under ordinary circumstances. So I think it's quite possible that under these circumstances, TMAO in humans is not actually a mediator of risk, but rather a marker of risk. And I think one possible explanation for the increased risk in the, in the subjects with uh, high TMAO um, is that the TMAO was serving as a marker for a high intake of animal products because, on the, and, and conversely, the first quartile, which had low risk, uh, would, uh, those individuals would probably be eating primarily a plant-based diet, and we know that that tends to uh, be associated with uh, reduced risk for, for
for coronary disease. It, it's possible that TMAA will have some utility as a marker, but I think that will be confounded in societies or in individuals who eat a lot of fish. I, I doubt that it will even be very useful as a marker under those circumstances. Uh, based on what I know, uh, don't fear carnitine. It, it, there's no really good reason to believe that in the standard a clinical supplementation range of two to four grams, let alone the amount one might get from natural foods, uh, that it's going to be a real risk. Uh, however, don't take 26 grams of carnitine a day. I'm not sure that anybody has ever thought to do that, but there may be a level of intake uh, which is not safe. As far as TMAO goes, I think that uh, it's not likely to be a really significant mediator of risk at ambient levels. Whether it is a useful marker will be presumably will be shown in, in future uh, research, but uh, I, I, uh, given the fact that uh, fish consumption will likely confound the findings, I think it'll be limited in that regard as well. Uh, I want to thank you, and uh, I want to mention that if uh, you'd like to see some more of my recent health essays, uh, they have been, uh, many of them are available on a uh, the website of a not-for-profit organization, uh, Catalytic Longevity. That's catalyticlongevity.org. Thank you. We hope you benefited from this presentation based on the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you're interested in more information about Mayo Clinic Proceedings, visit our website at www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you will find additional videos on our YouTube channel, and you can follow us on Twitter. For more information on healthcare at Mayo Clinic, please visit www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.